Hi everyone, Frankie M here. So today I'm going to be showing you the element bromine. Now before we get started, here's the safety equipment you'll, you'll need before you even think about going anywhere near this stuff. Gloves, a lab coat, goggles, uh, preferably sealed, so I'm going to just improvise with uh, pool goggles. You really do not want the vapors touching your eyes. And either a fume hood or a respirator. So let's get started. So here's bromine on the periodic table. It is element number 35 located in the halogens group. It is very, very reactive, especially with reducing agents like metals. Um, it'll do just about anything just to get that extra electron it needs to become stable. So here is elemental bromine. I synthesized this in a previous video. So as you can see, bromine is a dark red a uh, mobile liquid at room temperature. Though it is very volatile, that means that it quickly transitions from, ga from liquid to gas phase to produce this orange vapor you see in the test tube. Now I'm going to be reacting it with a few different materials today. I'm going to be reacting it with cellulose, aluminum, sulfur, isopropyl alcohol, and sodium metal. Now, before I even think about opening this test tube, I'm going to want to put my respirator on. The vapors from, from bromine are extremely toxic, and unless you like a lung full of hydrobromic acid, I, I highly recommend putting a respirator on. The best way I can describe the odor of bromine is if you mix the odors of highly concentrated bleach with skunk spray and pepper spray, the odor of this horribly foul liquid will be the result. In fact, uh, bromine comes from the word bromos, which is the Latin word for stench. And when it comes to this stuff, stench is a bit of an understatement. Okay, now that the respirator is on, I can open the test tube full of bromine. Already, you start to see the bromine vapors leak out. These vapors are heavier than air and thus will, thus they sink. Let's pour a little bit of it into the beaker here. So as you can see, bromine is extremely volatile and transfers to gas phase very, very fast. Now, let me grab a wet piece of litmus paper, show you just how acidic this stuff is when it comes in contact with water. Alright, here's a bit of wet litmus paper. Let's dip into the bromine vapor. As you can see, the vapor is so acidic, it turns white, completely corrodes the pigment out. Most of the vapor is just hanging out in the bottom of the beaker because, again, this vapor is much heavier than air, much more dense. It almost, gases don't act a whole lot differently than liquids do. So I can pour this gas out and it sinks just like a liquid would. So, without further ado, let's try some reactions with the bromine. Now, I expect all of these reactions to be very violent, so you're going to have to prepare accordingly if you want to try them. So here's how bromine will react with different materials. With metals, it will make their corresponding bromide salts. With organics, it will make hydrobromic acid plus various brominated organics, depending on what organic you're dealing with. With sulfur, it will make sulfur bromides mainly disulfur dibromide. So, let's start with a bit of cellulose. Come to think of it, I'm going to take this out back real quick because I expect these reactions to be very violent and I'd rather not have bromine splattered all over my lab. So let's drop this piece of cellulose into the bromine and see how it reacts.
This one's not too violent. But there's definitely something happening. Let's pour this out. As you can see, the bromine has quickly started corroding the cellulose and oxidizing it. Let's move on to the next substance. Okay, let's try some isopropyl alcohol now. It appears to be reacting to produce uh, chlorinated organics, as I predicted. I see a lot of bubbling, so I suspect I'm producing a lot of bromomethane. Let's put the cellulose in there. Now that the bromine's heated up a bit from the reaction, it can act on the cellulose a bit better. So as you can see, the cellulose is now beginning to blacken and dissolve as it's oxidized more and more by the bromine. The black substance is mostly carbon left behind uh, after the bromine uh, steals the hydrogens, becomes hydrobromic acid. So now let's try a bit of sulfur. Let's heat things up a little bit to get it going. The white substance you see there, I believe, the orange substance I see here, I believe that's disulfur dibromide. Not very pleasant stuff at all. I'm very glad I have this respirator on. Most of the sulfur is gone now, it has been oxidized. Now, Let's move on to a couple of metals. These are going to be by far the most violent. All right, so we need some more burning in the test tube. Let's react it with some aluminum. Now before I drop it in, there's an aluminum oxide layer that will prevent the bromine from initially reacting with the aluminum very much. So I'm going to chemically remove that oxide layer from the aluminum with hydrochloric acid. This will convert the aluminum oxide to aluminum chloride and expose a fresh surface of aluminum so the bromine can react. Let's dip it in real quick. And quickly put it in before the oxide layer reforms. Ah. And there we go. So the aluminum has now converted into aluminum bromide. Now, last but certainly not least, let's move on to sodium metal. Alright, 
All right, I've poured out the last of my bromine in there. Here's a chunk of sodium metal. Before I drop it out, I need to cut the sodium to reveal a fresh surface of sodium for the bromine to react with, just like I did with the aluminum. Now, I fully expect this to explode, so I'm going to want to stand back after I drop this in. All right, in three, two, one. I feel a lot of heat, but not as violent as expected. Perhaps I'll try heating the sodium to liquid before dropping it in. Let's go get some more. Alright, let's start heating it. Heat until it melts and starts burning. Liquid sodium and bromine in three, two, one. Woo! That was crazy. Good thing I was wearing my face shield for that one. Yeah, that is why you want to wear a face shield when you're doing something like this. Plus a lab coat. That way, the splattering pieces of bromine don't touch your skin. Um, sometimes the reaction with aluminum will catch fire, but mix it with liquid sodium, boom. Now that is a perfect example of why you want to wear face protection. Had I not been wearing face protection, I would have I would have wounds from bits of bromine splattering across my face and that that would corrode right through my skin and do some serious damage. So that is why you wear face protection always in the lab. That way you don't sustain any major injuries. That was pretty cool though. Needless to say, don't ever try this unless you've got a background in chemistry. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.